If you do go on to enjoy today's video, please consider liking it because I'm terrible at FIFA and I need all the self-esteem I can get. If you're interested in football shirts, football boots or anything football related, go check out my Depop. The link for that is also down below. And if you do need any coins, head over to u7bystore.com. Use the code TVM at checkout for a discount. The link is in the description. What is going on guys, Tim here, welcome back to a brand new episode of the Brentford Save in FM22. I apologise for no episode yesterday, I literally didn't have enough time to get to the point I wanted to be at to start recording. It's not just a case of, oh, have I got time to record, it's can I get there in time? Because obviously we don't just play two games, pause it, save it and then come back the next day and carry on where we left off. Because otherwise a season would take, I don't know, three weeks, maybe more. So we have our draw for the Europa Cup 2, which is, of course, the Conference League. There are some tricky teams in there, Marseille being one of them. Hertha Berlin, probably not going to be an easy game. Lille in there as well. And Real San Sebastian, which, of course, is Real Sociedad. They play PSV, who also made it out of our group. So that could be a difficult one. We play Mulder, which... Mold, Molder. I, I don't. I don't think this is going to be too difficult. Mold. Uh, they, they run of form. Well, I say they run of form. Their previous round, we skipped the first knockout round, of course, because we finished top of the group. Uh, they went through on penalties against a team from the Kazakhstan league. So, if they are struggling to beat a team from the Kazakhstan league, surely, surely we have enough in us to beat them. If, of course, we make it through here, things start to get a bit serious. We're into the quarterfinals of the Conference League. If we have a little look to see what what happened since the last time we played, I think this was the game that you saw. I think we played Villa and then we beat Newcastle. I'm pretty sure that was how it went down. Either way, um, we then lost 1-0 to Palace. Pathetic performance. We didn't really show up. And then I, I didn't change anything necessarily. I... I just had a little tweak of the tactic, I guess, and, and against Man City, I used, I took Griffo off and, and started at DM, and we played a little bit more compact, and then against Blackburn, I kept the system, I didn't play, uh, as you can see on, on this site here, Griffo didn't feature, because I kept that DM, and then we played and beat Leeds 2-0, I moved Griffo up that time, but we were playing a little bit more cautious, we were trying to uh, just keep the ball a little bit more, really. Uh, nil nil against West Ham, frustrating game, really. We didn't play particularly well. Barisic missed a penalty, which is really frustrating. Then we beat Burnley, two goals to nil. Not one of these games... Oh, that's it, yeah, because he didn't get injured in the game. Basically, uh, as we go into our game against Mould in a second, you'll notice that Bastoni is our current left wing back. Why? Well... Barisic is injured for two months, which means he's probably going to miss the remainder of the season. And Barbu also picked up a knock. There are a couple of players there who aren't registered. Nianzu is making his way back from fitness, but he's been out for so much of the season. I don't really think he's going to feature an awful lot going forward. He is by far our best centre-back. But I say by far. He's not by far anymore at all because the other ones have developed a fair bit. But he is our best centre-back even though he's 20. But because he's been out for so long, I just don't see him featuring that much. Uh, we have other centre-backs who are pretty decent now. We're going to go back to Wallace, Agward and Ayer. Uh, I'm saying that because in the last game I just played, I had... Who did I have? I had Osifo on the left-hand side and I had... Stanisic on the right, so only Ayer of those of that back three there uh, actually played the last game. But we're about to go in with this team on a positive mentality with a slightly lower line. I've actually been playing a lower defensive line. We're used to playing a higher defensive. I'm actually going to play a standard line and a standard line of engagement up top as well against Mold. I'm going to call them Mold rather than Molder because I feel like I feel like Molder is the way you say it, but I'm just going to say Mold. So I'm going to play a standard line against other Premier League teams. I've been dropping a little bit further back. I just don't think our centre backs are as quick as they need to be to be playing a higher line because we only have that three at the back. We're not playing an offside trap either, so I've dropped it a little bit. It seems to be working in the league. We've won, or rather, we haven't lost in our last four. 
We are favourites to win this, so without any further ado, as you can see, our run of form, it's not bad, not by any stretch of the imagination. Molders or Molds, I'm going to call them Molder, Molds run of form is a draw because we don't have their league added. We can't see how well they've done in the league. So that draw is the European game they played against the Kazakhstan side. Uh, we have some handbags here. A free kick on the edge for Griffo. He can, he can hit them. This is perfect Griffo range. And we are 1-0 up. Ninth goal of the season, seven minutes on the clock. I, I don't wanna I don't wanna jinx things, but I'm pretty sure that this is gonna be a walk in the park. Oh, I've said it. I've said it. Uh I I, I regret saying it. I'm back on 2D again. I do apologize. I think a lot of people were like, yeah, I don't mind this, uh, in the last game. So let's go back to the sideline. Uh reason I, I I just because I was by myself, I was playing 2D and I prefer it that way. But uh, as you know, you get to see what's going on. Great ball through to Onuachu. Can't play it across, but the defender does. And Fernino is there for his 24th goal of the season. Nine minutes in, we are 2 0 up at home. I'm pretty sure away goals don't count. So it's largely, I mean, it doesn't matter whether we win 5 or 6 0 here. So long as we don't lose the second leg or lose it by more than one goal, we should be fine. I, I don't. Yeah, like I said, I, I don't really envisage Mulder holding much resistance. The next game is against Blackburn in the league. I was going to skip to show you the second leg, but if this continues the way it is, if this game finishes 3-4-5-0, there is absolutely no point showing you the second leg. I'll record it just in case, but that's another great ball through to Onyuachu. He's got a lot of work to do, cuts back on it, drags it back to Fernino, and it's a great challenge by the defender. Long ball forward, but there's no one there for Mould, and we pick it back up again. We are pummeling their goal in the first 20 minutes or so. Declan Rice uh, suffered a bruised shin. He should be able to play through it, according to my assistant. I'm going to leave him on there for now. I'm just going to ignore that because it's... Uh, I don't know. We, we don't need to pay too much attention to it. I mean, to be fair, we've probably won this game, so I could take him off at half-time, and I think I probably will. 64 minutes in, they've had a shot. We've not had a highlight. I'm not quite sure what my team is doing. They've basically switched off, I think. We'll bring Magno on. Uh, we'll take on Nuachu off. Yeah, Nino's playing well enough. We'll take on Nuachu off. Not that he's not playing well at all. It's just a case of... Might as well rotate when I have the opportunity. Bastoni would like to come off. I can make it happen. What I'm going to do is I'm going to bring Stanisic on for Bastoni. Right, this is going to be one hell of a swap round. So, I mean, to be fair, this is one hell of a swap round. I was going to bring on a central midfield player, put Seguin at right wing back. Make the Niles can go left back. But I think I'll just do that because Stanisic can play there. So I'll just do that. It's not going to be that one hell of a switch around at all. And we'll continue with the with the second half. All substitutions complete. We've won the game. It's just a case of can we make it three. Because if we can make it three, I am not concerned about going away to mould. Ball played over the top to Fernino. He's in on goal. Plenty of time. Save from the goalkeeper. He, he really should have done better there. Absolutely no reason why he shouldn't be scoring. Corners to come in here from Griffo. Whipped into the near post and uh, Wallace just heads it past the post. That's a shame. 3-0 and I would have been completely content. I mean, don't get me wrong, 2-0 is a good performance. They've not been anywhere near us, really. But when you go away, like we did last time, remember, we had our, our home fixture was away. To that Cyprian side. We did play the first round, did we? Hang on a minute. That's a good save from Raya. I said we, we skipped the first round. We can't have done, can we? Because we played that two-legged game against the Cyprian side. So, yeah, they, they gave us an upset in the first round because we were away from home and I didn't take it uh, too seriously because I thought, well, we, we've got this. And obviously, we didn't. There's been a, a trip there on Fernino. Vold knocks him over we are going to continue the highlight Fernino threw a goal for a second time of asking and he misses again maybe I should have taken him off I mean let me let me just switch those two around so tell his Magno and Nino get switched around because um that right-sided striker is the one that gets played through on goal as you've seen twice so if we can just put Magno in that situation instead uh, maybe he'll have better success if he's played through. Wallace played short to Maximovic, who hasn't done anything amazing since joining. There is Magno, and I trust him a little bit more than Fernino for some reason. Uh, the assist from Fernino, the goal from Magno, which is what we wanted. It should be 4-0. 
to be honest. But it's three, and we'll take it. There is Maximovic. Little ball inside to Griffo. There's Nino. Ball is brilliant to Magno. Good run. And, I mean, uses his right foot as well. The keeper, I mean, could have probably done a little bit better there. But there we are. Full time. Three goals to nil. Unbelievably comfortable performance. It is a shame we haven't got four. Judging by the stats on this left-hand side here, it's a shame we haven't got about nine. But, you know, three should be enough to take us into the second leg and see us through quite comfortably. So before we head in to the game against Blackburn, I've just realised, and it shows how much I know about the competition in, in terms of real life, that was a one-legged affair. That was just a one-off game. We've won, we're through. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure why I thought, like, just assumed knockouts mean two legs, right? But no, not in this instance. We are through. So, I mean, it is what it is. We will go through to face, who knows, the, the draw hasn't been made yet. I'm not sure why, because obviously, and I should have realised, because I did see extra time next to Hertha Berlin when they played Feyenoord, and I didn't twig. Which didn't didn't enter my head. Oh, you know, you wouldn't have extra time in the first leg. So anyway, teams that are through, um, it's not easy, if I'm honest. I think we were the only team that had, apart from maybe Lille, who won 4-1, we were the only team that had what I would call a comfortable performance. Even 3-1 there for Celtic, you'd say, oh, well, that was pretty comfortable. It was 2-1 until the 90th minute, where they made it 3-1, and that sort of eased pressure, obviously, for the final few seconds. But up until, you know, 2-1, that's not a comfortable performance. 2-1 is kind of like, right, if they score, we're in trouble. So only us and Lille had a comfortable time of it. Uh, but Hertha Berlin are through, Marseille are through, Lille are through, uh, Austria-Vienna are through. That would be a fantastic draw. Partizan are through, would be another fantastic draw. Celtic are through, wouldn't mind that at all either. And then Real Sociedad are through. So in an ideal world... Lille play Marseille and Hertha Berlin play Real Sociedad and we get one of the other teams. I would quite like to avoid Celtic, but if we get them, I'm still confident we can beat them. Any of the other teams, I think we should be fine. I'm not sure when the draw is or whether I'll get to, to find that out. So the draw is the day before the Liverpool game. So I'll come back for the draw after the Blackburn match. In terms of the league table, which is obviously something that's um, looking a little bit dodgy at the moment we are five points clear of Chelsea and six points clear of, of Spurs and if you'd said that to me without giving me any other information at the start of the season I'd have been like Do you know what it's gonna be a good year turns out not so much because Chelsea are mid-table Spurs are slightly worse than mid-table um not ideal however we do have a game in hand which puts us back up to 46 points which puts us back up to 7th because our goal difference is better than Leicester. Leicester have just beaten Manchester City, by the way, 5-0. Interesting. Leeds lost to Liverpool. Liverpool look like they're going to win the league again. They just they look very strong. Every time I see them play, they absolutely smash teams. Every single time I see the result. Onuachu trying to chase Ronaldo for the top goal scorer again. I bet he'll be happy when Ronaldo retires. He beat him last season, remember. And, of course, the average rating as well. I think Ronaldo probably beat him. Well, no, actually, I think Onyu actually might have won that because he didn't play as many games, did he? Assists-wise this season, last year, of course, Rafinha was there. But we also had Barisic there. Barisic has got nowhere near as many assists this year, unfortunately. Our goals have had to come from individual performances as well as a mixture of assists. But we are down in 10th. We need to beat Blackburn. The fortunate thing about Blackburn is they've lost 18 of their last 27. They've only won three games this year, all of which were 1-0. So it would be really nice. They did pick up points against Man United and Arsenal, though. Look at West Ham, by the way. Last year, again, they were in European places. This year, they're 13th in the league. Newcastle have spent copious amounts of money over the last few seasons. They're only in 14th. It is a very strange Premier League table. The top four isn't too dissimilar to what you'd expect, but the rest of it then is just a mess. So, Blackburn Rovers, the team that uh, we're going to assemble to play them looks like this. I've already sorted it out. I'll, I'll add the instruction of, you know, the, the, the player instructions uh, show certain players onto weaker foots and things like that. Um, 
I always click it because it's easier that you know that my assistant has a look at it and assesses it and does it than, than me going through every single time because otherwise I'd be here till Christmas before I played any games. But um, slight rotation. Tellis Magno comes in up top instead of Nino, who could do with a little bit of a break. Rice picked up a knock in that last game. He's fine. He can play, but I'm going to rest him for the game against Liverpool. Seguin comes into the midfield. Should Seguin be coming into the midfield ahead of someone like Seawold? No. On paper, no. But I like him, so he's going to. I mean, in terms of his like performance, 6.73 is not particularly very good. So maybe, just maybe, I shouldn't be playing him. Seawold's performance, 6.75. So then again... Should I be playing anyone? Probably not. Anyway, let's get into the game. For you Blackburn fans out there, this is what the Blackburn team looks like in 2023. Uh, a couple of unfamiliar faces in there. There is one very familiar face to us, though. Right at the bottom, Saman Godos. Of course, he was uh, at our club once upon a time. He is now part of the Blackburn Rovers setup. Our league form looks, or rather our recent form, it's not league form, our, our recent form looks very, very good now compared to what it was five games ago. Blackburn's, as you can imagine, is absolutely horrendous. Does not look very good at all. League table, you've just seen it. They are rock bottom. If they have any hope whatsoever of surviving this season, they need to beat us here. This is almost a must because the further we go on, the less points there is available. I know it's obvious, but they need a result. That's a penalty. If ever I've seen one, there's no need for VAR there, I'm pretty sure. Although, let's be honest, he will go to VAR. Why? I mean, can't you make decisions for yourself anymore? Penalty awarded. I could have told you that from up here. I'm literally in the nosebleeds and I saw that. So the penalty taker is Griffo. And he buries it. Good penalty from Griffo. Nice finish. Tenth goal of the season. I wouldn't say he's lived up to what Hadji was capable of doing. But he has popped up with a fair few important goals. He, he's put in some decent performances. I don't think he's given us the return Hadji would have given us. But, you know, those kind of things are out of our hands when the board accepts £54 million deals for your star player. I don't understand that. And I never will. That's the probably the... the only thing about FM that really gets under my skin you know when you play games like FIFA and maybe even Call of Duty and stuff you get annoyed at the game you get you're really angry at it you almost don't want to play it you have like a love-hate relationship with it I don't have a love-hate relationship excellent tracking back by on you actually by the way with FM because I never really get mad at the game because I always know that there's something I can do it's never like all oh, the game is against me like it would be in FIFA, for example, where people always complain about the game being against them. And it's true, it does happen, where you are literally fighting the game. Good ball through here to Maximovic, hits the top of the crossbar. But in FM, you know it's something you've done. You've put your, the wrong team out, you've you've gone out with the wrong tactics, you've been out foxed or whatever it may be. But the only thing that ever frustrates me is when the boards say, hey, look, we're accepting this because it's too good to turn down, even though you full, you know full well that it isn't actually too good to turn down at all. You could have got another 100 million for Hadji in this current market. Magno, Seguin, Maximovic back to Seguin. We're knocking it around really well. I, I don't feel threatened at all by this Blackburn team. Seguin again here. Orsifo, Maitland Niles. Can he put a good ball in? He puts a ball in. Grimes gets it clear. I did consider Matt Grimes actually uh, in the first season, but um, I decided against it. There's Griffo on the edge. Back to Maximovic. This is a. I mean, how many passes have we put together here? Ball in. Oh, that is a shame. I mean, one of the longest highlights you'll ever see in terms of possession play, and we can't make it count. Does question, really, why we had to sit through it, but there we are. Maximovic to mark that guy, because why not? He apparently has had one or two opportunities in and around the six-yard area. Five minutes from, from time, from the half-time whistle. Can we make it 2-0 before half-time? That would make me feel a hell of a lot better. 1-0 is fine, and they don't look like they're going to score, but you never know what their manager will say to them at half-time. We're doing it again. We're passing it around. We're holding the ball. It's a little bit boring. It's a great ball over the top to Magno. 
and it's good defending. You, you just can't argue with that. It's a very, very good slide tackle. I say boring. It's not really boring. If it was real life, I wouldn't be complaining. But um, in terms of FM, when you're commentating, there's only so many times you can say Seguin to Maximovic, back to Seguin. Bastoni with the ball in, it's blocked. Some ping pong action going on. Our centre back plays it into our central midfield player. On you actually looks for the overlap. There's Magno goal. That's a really good goal. Really, really well worked. Referee doesn't want to know, so he's not going to look at VAR, which is um, a bit of a novelty in this. But uh, there we are. I mean, I don't know whether I'm, I'm guessing it does. I'm guessing VAR checks everything in the background, and you only ever really get to see it if there is a contentious moment. But I just feel like in FM, they go to VAR all the time. Like there's never off oh, a crying out loud. There's never a moment where they don't need to check VAR. So Paul Onuachu, straight up injury. Now this could be anything from a, it's a hand injury. Have you ever known anyone to go off in a game because they've broken a finger? I don't think so. Would you can would you continue playing? I think I probably would. But there we are. Um Two injuries there in the exact same incident by the looks of things. We did play 52 minutes in that first half. Seven minutes over the allotted time. On you actually went off. Uh, the player that I actually told, Maximovic to man mark, has gone off injured as well. We are 56 minutes in. We have a highlight. Uh, we're 1-0 up. No, we're 2-0 up. I lied. They have nicked the ball back in midfield here. I am still confident we can take this from them and turn it into a, a chance for ourselves here. But it's a very, I mean, that is a very, very good goal. What are the defenders doing there? Freeman had so much time. So much space. Look at this. Moffy plays it into the middle. And then look at that run. That is brilliant. And whoever the hell the defender is on that right-hand side, you need to be asking questions of yourself because that was shocking let me just encourage the boys because we're 2-1 up against a team who haven't looked like beating anyone this season so that has to be a concern uh let's go and have a little look at what we can do to change things around i may bring declan rice off for seguin if he's not playing well seguin's playing well and he's got a professional attitude i don't feel like i need to take him off let's take maximovich off instead is rice what's rice doing um no, he's pleased. That's fine. I was going to say, I could bring on Seawall for him, but I won't bother. Uh, we could bring Nianzu on. Maybe tighten up the back a little bit. Let's bring Nianzu on for Stanisic. Maybe tighten up that little um, defensive trio because th that goal that they conceded there, not happy about it at all. Maitland-Niles realistically should have gone off then and I didn't, I didn't look my bad. So he's going to have to play the full game. Hopefully he's okay to play against Liverpool because we don't really have another right wing back. I mean, I could play Seguin there. Good challenge from Griffo and our and Maitland-Niles, I think, getting involved. I think Maitland-Niles was the player at fault now, thinking about it. So it wasn't one of the centre-backs. It was actually Maitland-Niles. And it could have been a fatigue issue because he is very tired. If we concede here, I tell you what, I may very well cry on camera. Ball played for, through and he's, oh, he's done it again. Oh, this guy. I need to buy him. That is ridiculous. I mean... The referee is going to look at VAR, but you don't need to look at it. That is onside all day long. Oh, dear, dear, dear. I mean, it's almost a carbon copy of that goal. Buckley to Moffy and then through. And, and the defence have, have pushed up too far. Maitland-Niles is trying to track him and he, he's nowhere near him. And ay ay ay. I mean, they're looking at offside. I mean, he's, he's about... A mile on side, maybe even more. Uh, can we can we shout encouragement? I have pushed up the the line. Uh, the referees come over to look at it. I'm not going to celebrate until I see that goal awarded pop up because I just don't think it will be awarded. That has to be disallowed. Kind of looked offside to me. Yeah, no surprise at all. We're going to get to see a replay, and I mean, just just a few players offside there. Now, what's worse than drawing the game? Yeah, I'll let you answer that one. Buckley to King. Great save from Raya. What is my back line doing at the moment? They are sleeping. 
They all went forward for that set piece a minute ago, and they all, every single one of them were offside. Now, every single one of them has played the Blackburn line onside. We need to wake up a little bit here. We have no time left. Come on. It's game over. We've, we've drawn against Blackburn Rovers, who are bottom of the league. That is an absolutely terrible performance. I, I, can't, I actually can't get over that. I honestly thought that was a done deal before we even started. I didn't take the game lightly, by the way. I didn't, like, rest players. I rested Declan Rice, but that's because he took a knock in the um, in the game against Mould. I didn't rest anyone that I didn't need to, and I didn't take it lightly. I just thought it was a foregone conclusion that we were going to beat a bottom-of-the-league team who have struggled to, to take points off anyone this season. That... I mean, that has really damaged our season. In terms of going for European football now, that is a bit of a problem because we don't have the easiest run going forward. We have reached that day. We are one day away from playing Liverpool and probably being spanked. But before we have to concern ourselves with that, we do have the quarterfinal of the Europa League conference draw. I want to avoid Lille. I want to avoid Marseille. I want to avoid her to Berlin if I can help it. And of course, Real Sociedad. I'm not, am I asking too much? I think I might be. Automatic draw then. Here we go. I mean, it's almost a guarantee that we're going to be hitting the ones we don't want to hit. I will take Celtic. Well, at least that's one big team out of the way. Marseille, I don't want it. That's, oh, that's Vienna. That's a shame. Her to Berlin. Oh, we've got Partizan. Thank you. Thank you. Don't know who I'm praying to. But um, yeah, there we are. We have the Serbian side, Partizan. Big, big fan of that. We will be favourites in this game. This is a two-legged affair, unlike the, the, the second knockout round. So we play Partizan. It does mean that either Hertha Berlin or Real Sociedad are going to get knocked out, which is really good. I'm assuming Marseille will beat Vienna and... More than likely, Lille will beat Celtic, but you never know. That's a bit of a 50-50 one. So, we we have a chance here. We may only have to win one game where we're not really the favourite. Now, I did take Blackburn lightly, kind of. I, I took it as a, a guaranteed win, and I am kind of taking this as a guaranteed win as well. But, I will be paying the utmost attention to this. I will be going all out to try and make sure that we win it that game takes place when does it take place or those two games i should say take place either side of arsenal and after spurs and before chelsea fantastic so five games there that i'm not really looking forward to but um i will come back for the first leg against partisan in the next video and if it's a precarious one, we'll come back for the second leg. If we've won 4-0, or we've lost 4-0, then uh, I may not bother coming back at all, and you'll see me next season. But we'll see what happens. If you have enjoyed that, do me a favor and hit the like button. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. And until the next time, goodbye.